I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. Good Saturday afternoon, everybody. All right. Now, look, um, I thought I would do a Saturday upload before I head to the gym. I just took my preamp. The preamp is the caffeine we take, you know, before we go and lift some weights. So uh, before that uh, 150 milligrams of caffeine hits me, along with a few other substances, hey, I'm a weightlifter. If you're not new to this channel or if you, you would know, I'm a weightlifter and I take it very seriously. But while the preamp is kicking in, I thought, hey, let's go ahead and do an upload. OK, now, for those of you that are used to the bedtime stories, don't worry. Um, I assume I will be available to upload a bedtime story for you this evening. So don't panic. I'm not cheating you. I promise. All right. This is Dave Ramsey. You're being his mommy. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. And I would like to thank you for joining me this Saturday. For those of you that don't make it during the weekdays, we're glad to have you here on the weekends. All right. Let's hit it, people. Brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Lindsay's with us in Waco, Texas. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? I'm good. How are y'all? Better than we deserve. What's up? So I'm in a little bit of a pickle. My husband wants to buy a brand new side by side. What's a side by side? I guess we will find out. Hey, I do not claim to know everything. All right. I would be lying. Okay. Just because we are YouTube creators does not mean we know everything. So we will find out what a side by side is. I do not know. So let me give you some context. Yesterday we closed in our house. Um, we will take home a little over 33000 on it. You our sold house your house? We paid for. You sold, sold your house. house. Okay. You got $33,000 in your pocket. Okay. Yes. Our current house that we're living in, our, our new house, is paid for. Cool. Um, we're, I convinced him to take 29000 of that and pay off his truck. A side-by-side's a truck? Hold on. People, we're going to pause. I don't know what a side-by-side -side is. I, I, I do not know. So we are going to do what we all know I'm going to do when I'm absolutely confused. We're going to look it up. I know somebody's probably thinking, she don't know what it is, but that's okay. What is a side? I, I don't know what that is. A side-by-side. -side, what is it? A, it's a vehicle, an SUV, an off-road vehicle. I've got my microphone and stuff. I've got all my equipment in front of me that you guys can see. Two C's. A side by side, it's a it's a vehicle. Okay, a vehicle. Now we know. Back on track. And now he wants to go buy a brand new side by side, and I'm like, but we have other things I need to pay for, and I keep telling him no, and he keeps saying, I we we have money now. I'm like, we don't we don't have money. Well, not if he. And this people is why you cannot plan on either getting out of debt or managing your debt when you have a partner that does not view money the same way you view it. It is near impossible unless you're one of those lucky people and you've got, you know, somebody that, okay, we will compromise maybe instead of taking the whole $30,000 equity. I think that's what you said in the house around 30, 33,000 equity, you know, maybe we can give 10 of it, you know, we'll give 10,000 of it your way, 20,000 of it my way, whatever. But this is why it's so freaking difficult. You know, at times I've wondered if I would have become debt free had I remained married um, and married to someone who didn't see money the same way I did. I, I sometimes wonder if I would have become debt free and I'm going to say the answer most likely is no. It doesn't mean you can't become debt free with a partner. You clearly can. You need a partner that sees it the same way you see it. And again, I want to stress, it's not even about becoming debt free. It's about the first step. Before you become debt free, it's just getting, it's admitting the bills you have, admitting the income going in, going out, and just trying to get the debt you do have under control to stop the bleeding, to be able to work towards financial freedom. He spends it on a side by side. You don't have any money. No, yeah, I don't uh, have money. Uh, to okay, throw it the rest well, of let me my stop day. a second. You don't have the money to buy a side by side, right? No. Okay, so he's talking. See, and what happens is, and of course, for those who want to watch this without all the interruptions, you can go to the description box. Every Ramsey video, I always put in the description box as to where you can, as to where you can go. Um, so anyways, but uh, this is the thing. Some people, the minute an extra dollar comes in the door, bam, it's being spent. You can never, ever, 
achieve financial uh, peace of mind if that is the way you spend money. Hey, I got an unexpected $50 refund check from my insurance company. All right. Don't know why I got it. I guess they adjusted my premiums or something. I got an extra $50, $50 check. Now, what would some, what would a guy like her husband supposedly do with it? Hey, we have 50 extra bucks to spend. I look at and say, hey, we have 50 extra bucks to save. You're right. Talking about, he's talking about, this is the same man that yesterday paid off his truck. And now he wants to go back in debt. So he's not really on the get out of debt plan. He's just kind of going along when you tell him to do something until he doesn't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. True story. True story. I will not say what relationship because I don't believe in uh, calling out people like that. Okay. I just don't believe in that. But a relationship years back. Okay. Um, I was in a relationship and the person needed to go and get a car repaired. So we were like, okay, go ahead. And, you know, I worked in a little office and stuff at the time. And I said, go ahead, you know, it was years back, uh, decades. And I said, go ahead. And uh, we we're like, go ahead, get your car repaired. So I think the repair, what about lipstick on my teeth? I set my lipstick on. Okay. So anyways, um, so I uh, said, go ahead. You know, we agreed we'd go and get the car repaired. I kid you not. I kid you not. What was supposed to be a $300 car part repair. Okay. Um, cause he was going to fix it himself. Literally comes back with a new vehicle. Not new is then, you know, one miles on the car, but new to us vehicle. Literally, I kid you not comes back with a new vehicle. I won't say, 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 say the brand, but let's just suffice to say it was a high end brand, something that was going to require some serious money, maintenance, yada, yada. And, um, came back with almost a $500 a month car payment for the next few years. We went from, yes, let's repair the vehicle. You go buy the part because he had the ability to repair $300 part. I, I just remember it was, it was a couple hundred. That's what the household budget was based on. Okay. I was at work, my little office job, get a phone call. Hey, guess what? I just bought a vehicle because all of a sudden in the time it took to go to the dealership, to look at the showroom, to go pick up the part in the service area that he was supposed to, he made the decision for the household to buy a five hundred dollars dollar a month approximately five hundred dollar a month vehicle this will sink you every single time every single time it will sink you that decision was made and to say it effed up the family household is an understatement so this is not a money problem this is a husband problem yes a relationship problem a communication problem, a lack of we want the same thing problem. I agree. Okay. So how old are you two? Uh, we just both turned 37 on Sunday and Tuesday this week. Yeah. What's he do for a oh, sorry. living? He is um, a heavy equipment mechanic by trade, but he just got into inside sales, which promoted him, like, upgraded him on his hourly wages yeah and the minute he got that upgrade what do you do he said i have more money you know what they call lifestyle creep lifestyle creep the more you make the more you spend you know what i made sure i did now look people this is about i'm not bragging i've been through too many uh money issues two bankruptcies auto repossession i've been through much crap to be able to brag but what i am saying is from learning from life's experiences okay learning from life's experiences um one of the things that i have learned is you know I've been able to avoid lifestyle creep. And I think the reason I've been able to avoid lifestyle creep, that's where, you know, the more you make, the more you spend. Okay. Um, respectively, I make 10,000 a year more than I made when I was married. So I got divorced 10 years ago. My income has gone up by 10,000, but oddly enough, my lifestyle's dropped because I avoid lifestyle creep. This is the type of guy. And at 37 years old, without a come to Jesus meeting, you know, where, where, where we have a serious talk. That's what they call it at school. A come to Jesus meeting. Okay. Without a come to Jesus meeting where you really 
get in touch with your inner self and what it is that you want in life, where you are falling short, yada, yada, unless you can do that at 37 years old, your money habits, in my opinion, are very much seated. In other words, how you view money, the way you think of it, okay, that intrinsic relationship you have with it, how you feel emotionally about it. I think, honestly, I think it's pretty seated. I think the only thing that makes it change is if you're with the wrong partner. I, I, I'm i telling you, 56, I really believe that. I've always been financially conservative. Okay. I always have been, even through, even through bankruptcies, my natural instinct, financially conservative. I'm not a risk taker. I'm not going to go buy the latest Bitcoin. I'm not going to go buy property in Peru and blow 20,000 on it. Like the video we did the other day with a guy who wasted $20,000 of his sister's money that he borrowed. Okay. I'm not a risk taker, but at 37 years old, unless he changes up here, what's going on in his mind. Okay. She, and she's conservative and she's like, Hey, you know, yeah, you got a pay raise, but let's use that to maybe, you know, fund some bigger goals that we have long-term goals that we have unless, you know, they're, they're on the same page with that. You're, you're, you're talking two totally different, um, financial lifestyles and unless one or the other has that come to Jesus meeting and preferably it's the one that says we should save there, there's going to be a constant battle between, um, the, the money and where, and where it goes. He is the type of husband I would not want today under any conditions. The minute the extra buck comes in, our goal isn't to make bigger, more solid, positive, life-changing goals. Our goal is to spend it and to spend it on frivolous crap. So now that we know a side-by-side -side is a vehicle, that's what he wants to buy. I don't know what a side-by-side -side looks like, but at least I know it's a vehicle. But, so he's, but he's, he's, a, he's a mechanic by trade. What do you do? He's a I'm an occupational therapist assistant. Okay. We, I gross. Um, and what other debts do you have now that his truck is paid off? I have. We have Some, sometimes Dave cuts people off. She, he should have let her finish what she was grossing. I would have liked to have known. I can imagine as an occupational therapist assistant, she probably doesn't make that much. Okay, I'll probably put maybe around. I'm, I'm just I'm gonna take take a shot in the dark. Between thirty to forty thousand a year. A camper uh -huh. that we bought, and we do use it. We use it like hold on. Uh, have we have a camper uh -huh. that we bought, and we do use it. We use it like almost. Uh, I don't care. Weekend. What are the debts of you got? I know you don't care. Um, I have a camper and student loans. That's it. How much is a camper debt? Uh, sixty. Sixty thousand oh dollars. Jeez, jeez, you know, I'm going to go lift extra heavy today j just to just to get over where I think this call is going. Sixty thousand dollars for a camper. My condo, the, 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 this place behind me, hundred thousand in 2020. A camper, a camper, a camper. Let that sink in your head. Now, look. In, in, unless you're in le, unless you're the Judds and you need to, um, you know, be driving around town or all over country, you don't need no camper. You're not performing. You're not on the road. You're not a roadie. Yes. That, that wasn't my choice either. Yes, it See? was. Well, here's the thing. I know she says it wasn't my choice, but here's what is her choice. And we don't even know what her student loan debt yet. Her choice is to have married a man that is like that. And sometimes I think you generally might marry someone and really not know what they're like financially. I, I, I'll give people that. You know, you can marry someone and really not know. Or you marry somebody when you're young. It's another scenario. You marry them when you're younger. And as the years go by, as their income goes up, as their job titles change, now you start to get an idea as to what that person's really like. Okay. I think that happens to a lot of people too. You know, you can marry somebody in your twenties and by 37, 40, you have a really good idea of what they're like and how they view money. So you can't always predict it. Sometimes it's the luck of the draw. $60,000 for a camper, but I can bet that you probably loved being in the camper. You're oh, a grown up and you it. live there and you signed the papers. I so, didn't sign anything. It's how is he buying this? Nope. D d d wait, did you hear what she said? She didn't sign anything. And guess what? Guess what? 
in the relationship I had years back with the uh, boyfriend who bought the vehicle for $500. I didn't sign crap. I wasn't even present. I wasn't even present. I was at work at my office job. That's where I was at. And I just literally got a phone call saying, hey, guess what? We, not really we, it was his, he upgraded his vehicle. He didn't need that 10-year-old vehicle that he was driving that needed a $300 part that he was totally capable of fixing. He decided that he needed something much nicer. So when she said, I didn't say anything, 100%, I totally believe her. I didn't have, I didn't even have to be present. They didn't even have to give me a phone call. Like when this, ha when this goes down, what takes place? He goes over to the dealer on his own, signs for it and mm -hmm. says, honey, look, I bought us a camper. Is that what happened? Thank you. Once again, Jay to the rescue. Yes, Jay, that is exactly what happened with her. That is what happened with me. That is exactly what happened. If you think these dealerships, camper ships, you know, sit and, you know, go, well, let, let's check with your spouse first and see if it's okay. They ain't going to do that. And nor should they have to. You're a legal adult. You're a legal adult. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. And it happens to people all the time. This will financially sink you. The, the, um, relationship the financial relationship you and your partner each have with money will be the determining factor as to whether or not you are consistently going to live broke whether one person is going to feel like they are consistently trying to chase the other person and their bills i can honestly testify okay i would rather be single for the rest of my life than ever ever feel like i'm with somebody who just has no concept whatsoever of money. Now, don't misinterpret me. I didn't say I wouldn't, you know, be in a relationship with someone who has debt. Nah, that, that, that's not what I'm talking about, okay? What I'm talking about is, do we have the ability to own up to what we need to owe? Can we competently and with financial uh, respect for each other Make sure that our financial actions do the other person no harm. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that, no, I won't ever marry somebody who has debt now. Nah. In all honesty, be really honest, being debt free, having no credit cards, no kids, no mortgage. Basically, I have my $450 a month HOA here in Florida. Okay. My property taxes probably run 800 bucks a year. I just got done paying that. Okay. Um, there really aren't a whole lot of bills. I put about 30% of take home into retirement. Um, that, that, that to me gives me ability to fall in love with somebody who maybe does have debt and help them get out of it. Yeah. That's actually how I see it. I don't see being, you know, financially stable as well i'm financially stable and by god i'm don't not gonna help anybody else that isn't nah 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 that's that's not that's not what i'm saying but what i am saying is i would not want to be with somebody in past relationships that i've had where he is spending faster than i can dance to help pay it off that's what i don't want where when i put my head on the covers at night i'm like what the f did we just do i went to work in an office I get a call and, quote, we have just purchased a $500 a month vehicle payment for the next several years. That's what I'm talking about. No discussion. No, is this what we need? That's what I'm talking about. And we still don't know the student loan balance. What he does is he says, I'm going to go buy this. I'm like, no, I don't have to. I, I, I can't. I'm paying off other stuff. We're paying off other stuff. We, we can't. And he Beca because she's married to someone who has immediate gratification needs. It's seated in him at 37. This is the type of person who is going to retire without money because he doesn't see long term. He can't make a goal and see long term. He wants the immediate gratification. He will sink her ability to retire. Okay. He will sink if they stay as a couple. He will sink her ability to retire financially secure. He goes and, and he does it. He goes and does it anyway. 
Right. Be- because because he don't he, he don't give a crap. Okay? That's why he does it. That's why an old boyfriend of mine did it. They don't care. They do not care. You are a saver. She is a saver or at least a long-term goal planner with the intentions of saving down the road. And she's married to someone who says, I'm going to live for it today. Yes. Okay. We have a side by side. It's paid for. I, I said you. You, you already have, have a, a paid it, for side by side. What is it worth? That. Yes. Um, they already have a side by side. They just. Oh, geez. 22. And it's used. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what? Uh, how much student loan debt do you have on? 55. Oh. Okay. So you. Have- Remember the video we did the other day with the guy who has four freaking cars, four cars he owns. We did that earlier this week. Do you remember that audience? Do we remember that? He bought four cars, one car he modified so poorly. Nobody wants it. Another car he bought that it it, it don't even work. The other two cars he still owes payments on. He lost his hundred thousand dollar plus a year job, high school dropout, lost his hundred thousand dollar a year job, twenty two years old, flat broke with nothing to show for it, and in debt. This is the same thing. They're just doing this with side by sides. Wow. You have a hundred and fifteen thousand dollars in debt. And a paid for house, and your household income is what, 100? It's 100, and this year I think it'll be 162. Oh, okay. That's excellent. So, so it's actually a great income. But again, it's not what you make, it's what you keep. If every time he gets a pay raise, he's just going to go buy another side by side, he's going to buy more, more toys. I'm sorry, as a school teacher, I will retire better than they do. You know, you've ever heard stories as to why school teachers retire more comfortably than a lot of people who have made more money. It's because school teachers, we have to learn to live and to work in a very uh, restricted supply environment. Okay, supply environment. We we know that the department has so much money. It can allocate so much money towards each classroom, towards each teacher. Well, we make enough to live on. We don't necessarily make enough to thrive on. That's just my opinion. Okay. Not without a partner, not without a spouse usually helping out. Okay. But, but we're solid. Okay. So as a solid, you know, uh, we're, our income tends to be stable. It rides recessions for the most part. Okay. But many teachers can retire better than people who have made, you know, 200,000 a year. If the couple who's made 200000 a year doesn't learn how to manage their money like a teacher. All right. Well, I mean, you guys need to sit down and not have a side-by-side discussion. Mm-hmm. You need to sit down and have a marriage discussion. Thank, Dave, you know what? I, I would like to thank you for saying that because, you, you know, that was my thought. And I hope they don't have kids because at this point, at this point, all right, um, if they come to the realization, he's like, babe, every time I get a pay raise, I'm spending it. I- I'm, I'm not doing all this work not to get rewarded. Whereas people like me and perhaps many of us that watch the Dave Ramsey show, okay, okay because we're obviously tuned into money and stuff. Um, our reward is seeing our debt go down. Our reward is seeing that we are getting on top of our money versus feeling like our debts and our bills are bearing us. Knowing what I know today, all right, knowing what I know today, having lived through the experiences that I've lived through with, um, from spouse, from ex-spouse to boyfriends, okay, um, that cannot manage money. I would have no desire to stay in this relationship. And I think as you get older also, here, here's an, here's another truth. I don't want to spend my life trying to change your mind. I don't want to spend my life trying to, and I will not. It's more important. I will not spend my life trying to convince you that my way is the right way. That my way of, you know what? I think we really need to manage our debt. I think we really need to, you know, change the way we view money. And you're like, no, I don't want it. You know, because I love you enough, I'll let you go. Go, go go live it. Go live it. 
And when you're 55 years old and you are 12 years from retirement and you have nothing and you have nothing to show for it and you wind up on the Dave Ramsey show, God help us what we're going to do when he retires. I do not know. Um, but you wind up on the Dave Ramsey show, like some of the callers we've heard. I'm 60 years old. I have no money and I'm, you know, $50,000 in debt. That was your choice. I don't want to spend my life trying to convince my partner as to why we should save money. Okay. And I'm sure as hell not going to spend my life managing my partner. Like what's this titled here? You're being his mommy. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to spend my time doing that. We just agree that we disagree and that perhaps we are not best suited for each other. Yes, sir. And say, I love you and I'm tired of being your mother. I don't want to be married to a little boy who has to ask his mommy to make decisions. I want a man who stands beside me and looks into the future and says, how can we prosper as a family and puts his own little selfish desires to the side of the good of the family. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to give myself snaps because basically that's what I was saying. All right. Just said it differently. Dave was just paraphrasing basically what I was saying, but that's exactly it. And you know, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this. You get to the point that the one nice thing about getting older that I like, that I love about being in my fifties, not, not that it's always awesome. I mean, the knees give out every now and then. Okay. But, um, quite frequently, but the one psychological thing I love about being in my fifties, that I wasn't even in my forties and thirties, but I'm definitely in, in my fifties. It is okay to say you are not the right partner for me. It's okay. It's okay to let you go and say to you, we are so different in the way we want to shape our future that, you know, we can stay together and try to battle and battle and see who's right and who's wrong. Guess what? I don't have to be right. This is what's neat about being in my 50s. I do not have to be right. But I also don't have to stay with someone who's wrong for me. And vice versa, of course. If they've not had kids together and she's 37 and this is his, this is the lifestyle he wants to lead. All right. Let him lead it. Let him lead it. I need a man. Would you please find me one? And if it's not him leave and I'm gonna make a call out here here's just this is what I think I think that you guys started making a little bit of money and you started doing maybe uh, this is my guess a little better than some of the, the way maybe you're, you grew up and I think he thinks you guys are rich and I think he thinks this is what people with money do am yeah. I right and especially yesterday after we closed on the house he's like we don't have a house name anymore. I said, no, because that's going to go to something else. Yeah, now you might see, go. You see, and if you're not in agreement as to what that's going to go to, the relationship breaks down. The relationship was already broken down before the money came in. You just didn't know because the money wasn't there to show you in its glory and gleaming light. It was already like that. You were just weren't in a position to be able to see each other under that type of circumstance. 160000 and you got a stupid butt $60,000 mm -hmm. camper mm -hmm. and $55,000 worth of student loan debt to clean up. Mm -hmm. And then you can go build some wealth and then you can buy a side-by-side -side if you want to upgrade your side-by-side -side with cash when you're not in debt anymore. But that's All right, folks. My preamp is slowly starting to kick in. Hey, look at this. Almost right on time, about 30 minutes. I'm going to upload this really quickly for Saturday afternoon. What are we running? It's running about 12.05 here. Um, but seriously... That, that I, I, ha I have wondered at times, truly, if I had remained married, would I have achieved debt freedom by this age? And I'm going to say chances are no, I would not have. And I'm not going to blame whose fault. Uh, that, that, that's, that's not relevant to me. But what is relevant is would I be in the financial position I am in right now? Even, even, even with all the, <coughs> excuse me, even with all the exact same money coming in, because that wouldn't have changed. All the money still coming in. Would I be sitting in the position I am in today financially? No, even with dual income. 
I am in I am in a better position today having you know having my ex leave okay um and we were dual income well over 100 you know not well over I, I'd say you know maybe around 120 30,000 a year okay um and having my income drop all the way down to one school teacher because for me to become debt free I was the only one driving the ship and I wasn't about to crash it. Sometimes, you know, especially for people who are divorced and you feel like, this is my little pep talk, for, to, to those who, you know, may find themselves recently divorced and they think this is the end. You know, I, we could barely make it. And this is what I thought. I could barely make it financially with two people. How the heck was I supposed to do it with just one? And I remember telling that to a girlfriend of mine. I said, how am I supposed to do this with just me when, when I, had a, I had a spouse and we couldn't do it? Well, the reason you couldn't do it is because you weren't on the same page. And the money that was coming in wasn't being used in a prudent way. So don't panic because you lose an income. Okay? And that's what I learned. Don't panic. Stay calm. Pick up a second job if you have to. You know, bribe friends and neighbors with, hey, you know, a couple extra bucks to help you out with a favor. All right? You do things like that. I think if they don't have kids, you know what I think? I think they should probably consider splitting up. I don't see him changing at 37 years old. She can actually find herself better off financially on her income where she can determine where it goes then with two incomes and one person is poking holes in the boat well you're trying to patch it up i hope to see you this evening for tonight's bedtime story i usually intend to do one on saturdays and sundays don't don't kill me if i don't but hey you know what I, i've had a pretty good track record here people i've had a pretty good track record it's time for me to go pick up about 150 pounds in weights yeah it's time for it's time for my happy place. Well, right along side next year with you fine people as well. I'm Carrie. This is Student Loan Chit Chat. I'd like to thank you for joining me for this Saturday's afternoon tea and chat. I will see you uh, most likely this evening. All right. Have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. <laughs>